What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Unhinged Talk. I'm your host, Patrick Hennessy, joined tonight by Paris Givazina Fantos and Brian De Janeiro. How are we doing tonight? Good, man. How about Good, you? Good, bro. Can't complain. You know, Yankees losing streak is finally dead. Um, beat the Mets today in a very weird win. Uh, walk off wild pitch. Dylan Batances, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, Eric Kratz. Let's get down to Eric Kratz here. Um, let me start off by saying that Eric Kratz is kind of just what the Yankees needed. Uh, for the past few seasons, well, actually, no, just for this season, uh, Kyle Higashioka was heading into the season as the backup catcher. And we've seen what Higashioka has done the past couple seasons. And that's nothing. Um, he doesn't really contribute anything offensively. He's not the best offensively. And I've always been saying the Yankees need a veteran backup catcher. And Austin Romine was a veteran catcher, but he didn't have the same experience as a guy like Eric Kratz does. Um, obviously we wish we could have Romine at this point, but he's too good to be a backup. So that's where this comes into play. And I think Eric Kratz is the perfect fit for the Yankees. Um, and personally, I don't know if this is an extremely hot take at this point, but I think he might be a better option over Gary Sanchez. Um, we see the relationship he has with the, with the starting pitchers. He's hitting better than Gary Sanchez. He puts up better at bats. He's better defensively. So at, at what aspect of the game right now is Gary Sanchez a better option than Kratz? I'll say this. I feel like with Gary finally having an ace to work with, I feel like in the long run, Gary's been trying to work on his fielding and his like his mindset's more on positioning, like the glove and his framing and his catching work than he is focusing on being a, an all-star hitter. Because we all know when first Gary came into the league, he had an outstanding run. He almost became rookie of the year in 2016, but I feel like having an ace and trying to work with the pitching staff, he's primarily focusing more on being a better catcher than a hitter at this rate. So as much as Gary's talented, Kratz is being a great veteran for all the pitchers. Like when will you expect Jay Happ going strong seven and a half innings? That's what I'm saying. It's crazy. It's it's crazy what he's able to do. And, and Happ had nothing but great things to say about Kratz and his performance behind the plate after the game today. Um, I, I think his exact words were, there aren't enough good things I could say about him. So I think that just shows because half a pitcher who has been struggling this season and a guy who's really been struggling for the past two seasons, if you really look at it, um, if he's able to get himself right with Kratz, you might have to just use him as like his personal catcher at this point, if they have such a strong relationship. But what do you think about it, Brian? Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see that happening. Um, if Kratz is a better option for Hap, then I'm totally happy – going with that um i still think that gary is way more dangerous and in the long run over the course of a season if he can get right he should be the better option at catcher um but like you said i mean there's a very little bad that you can say about kratz right now i mean he's hitting like what 295 something like that yeah something like and he, that. after going over three today so he he, he tried to yeah. he tried to uh sack bunt today so. yeah i, I know mean, but it's like I think it says a lot about the Yankees' current attitude towards Gary Sanchez. Let's not forget, Gary Sanchez was on the bench at that point, and he easily could have came in as a pinch hitter for Kratz, and they didn't. Um, well, could you imagine? Right now at all. I mean, that's not the right move at this point. No, but could you imagine two years ago if I told you that Eric Kratz was batting in the ninth <laughs> inning with, with a runner scoring position and with Gary Sanchez off the bench, you're not bringing him in? It just shows how far this man has declined in the past few years. And and it's sad because, don't get me wrong, like, I love Gary Sanchez. Um, but I think what a lot of fans are doing is living in the past with him and just thinking about all these times we kept saying, wow, he's the potential to be the best catcher in the league. He is the best catcher in the league. I don't even think he's a top 10 catcher in the league at the moment. There's nothing yeah. about Gary Sanchez that has showed us this season that he's that guy anymore. The one thing that I will say is that this season's been really weird. I mean, we have several guys hitting below 200 that are normally hitting very well. Yeah. So, I mean, except for Brett Gardner. Kinda, well, Brett Gardner's garbage and he's washed up, but <laughs> we all know that. But I mean, I think Mike Ford's hitting like 170, something like that. I mean, yeah. so these, these guys, there's, there's several of the guys that really aren't hitting that well. And maybe you can chalk it up to the short season. So, I don't think that we can quite give up on Gary. But definitely right now he's not he's not hitting he's not feeling he's not playing the field well so there's you know there's not much there aren't many good things that you can say about him right now. Like I'll say this: the Yankees have struggled in the last ten plus games. They just came off a losing streak. But if you really look at it, both our lefties in back to back games have thrown 
very good outings, but it was the bullpen that messed up big time. And isn't it sad that it, both of them had the reaction of, come on, you got to be kidding me. Like if you saw Jordan Montgomery yesterday, and then you saw Jay Happ after Adovino gave up the home run. It's just sad because a lot of these players are trying to do too much instead of trying to put the ball in play, small ball. Like, look at DJ LeMahieu. The guy came back today and he hit a triple. It's yeah. like he just picked up where he started with from the beginning of the season before he got hurt. But you got to stop doing too much. Home runs are not going to be the only ways you can win games. When you're averaging with one this lineup. Exactly. Like Luke Voigt, would you have expected him to hit 12 home runs and be on a tear in a 60 yes. game season? Yeah. Yeah, like listen, he's basically <laughs> other than DJ LeMahieu, he's been our MVP this year. Luke yeah. Voigt's no, been I, on, I would say I would MVP. say Luke Voigt. Yeah, he has been because he down. I mean he, he's been the only guy who's consistently stayed in the lineup healthy and produced at such an astronomical level. But I mean, knock on wood, like knock said, on wood, we don't lose him. No, I mean, got to knock on everything at this point. But like you said, I mean, the Yankees season so far has been so negative. They've had so many great performances ruined by either an atrocious bullpen or an atrocious lineup. So that's why looking at the lineup right now, um, I'm just looking for bright spots. And like how Void is one of them, Kratz has turned into that guy for me. Now, I, like, I've always been like a, a Kratz guy, you could say, like advocating for him to be the backup <laughs> catcher. But I mean... For how long? Wait, wait, has this been going on for several see, years? Or is this no, like, this has been going on since the, since the you, spring. You made it sound like I've always been a Kratz guy. No, I no, I've been a Kratz guy this season. Okay. Yeah, also, okay. he was on the team in, in 2018, 2017. Yeah, but you made it sound like it's been I'm forever. a Kratz guy. I'm going on the record of being Kratz guy. So, basically, I, I think what he provides to this team is just a breath, breath of fresh air, basically. I mean, this is a bunch of young guys. A lot of them are getting their first taste of big league experience. So you bring a guy like Kratz in here. I think a, a bunch of us mentioned in the group chat today. I see like future managerial potential in Eric Kratz. Um, even in his post game press conference, he just conducts himself so well. If we're talking about a leader in that clubhouse, I'm looking at Eric Kratz. I'm not looking at Brett Gardner. And it says a lot because Gardner's been in that clubhouse for over ten years, and I don't see that that team leadership mentality out of Gardner like I do out of Kratz. Like if we're just being honest. Can I ask you guys this question? I know everybody has their opinions based on of Aaron Boone of how he's handled games, how he's handled the clubhouse. Do you think we'll ever see Aaron Boone hold his players accountable for all the mistakes they make no. during the game? No, that's a simple answer. That's a just no right off the bat. That's not what he's here for. He's a player's manager. That that's what he is. He he's always gonna like be playing rock, paper, scissors with his guys. He's always gonna be like saying everything's good and it's greeny and chappy. You know what I mean? But <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question now. Now, if let's say the playoffs started tomorrow and the mm -hmm. Yankees have the same amount of guys healthy that they do now, um, are you starting Eric Kratz a catcher or are you starting Gary Sanchez? Do you want my honest opinion? I want your honest opinion. I'm going with Sanchez. Really? Yeah, I think if, you got to. Because I don't when think you think you really about the – like as much as Eric Kratz is a great veteran backup, especially for older pitchers or any other type of pitcher the Yankees have in their rotation or their bullpen. It's a, whenever it comes to postseason, it's a brand new fresh start. So Gary Sanchez is probably going to go with a clear mind and he's been in the playoffs before. So he knows yeah. what he's going into. And if he can be an all-star potential or even a playoff savior, I'll take Gary Sanchez a hundred percent over Eric Kratz. No doubt. Yeah. I also think they need to drop him in the lineup a little bit. What did he bat today? Fifth. He's yeah, not. He's I mean, not when you compare him to the rest of the guys, he's better still, than Byron Sean like, and Tyler Wade. Yeah, but I think for Gary's sake, you kind of have to drop him in the order at this point because he's he's obviously feeling the stress. He's you know not putting up good at bats. He needs to relax and like have a little bit of the pressure taken off him. If you bat him seventh or eighth or something like that, it might get, take some of that pressure off. In a yeah. fully healthy lineup with Judge Stanton and all those big key guys that we're missing right now, Sanchez is a number seven hitter. Yeah, Bob, definitely. Yeah. But I'm saying even yeah. now, I think it, it'd be good for them to drop him a bit. Even, yeah, even I mean, if you have Kratz batting ahead of him, I mean, honestly, you need to do something to, to change it up for him. Well, I mean, they wouldn't be in the lineup at the same time, most likely. Well, but I mean, Gary was DHing or whatever. Yeah, I mean, but Just going back to my question, I mean, I think my answer to it, I think you guys know, I, I would go with Kratz. Um, <laughs> You're in Kratz the playoff, guy. I'm a Kratz guy. I'm on the record. I'm a Kratz guy. I don't know if I'll still be a Kratz guy in a couple weeks, but, you know, I guess we'll see. <laughs> but um, in the postseason, I need two things. 
I need defense and I need good at bats. I don't think Gar- like we know Gary Sanchez, he has the potential of hitting 500 foot home runs at any moment, but we haven't seen him be able to play good defense. We haven't been able to see him block. I feel like he has at least one pass ball every game and he doesn't put up good at bats when you're in your, if you're in the postseason, in all likelihood, you're going up against the top of the top of the pitchers in the league. Um, that doesn't really fare well for Gary Sanchez because he's a swing and a miss guy. We have not seen good plate discipline out of him this season. And I don't know his career postseason stats, but I don't think they're too well. Um, I, I think he disappears a lot when we face good pitching in the playoffs. So if I could take a guy like Kratz, who we've seen him do nothing but work every at-bat he has into basically a full count. I mean, he doesn't really strike out that much either. He had a three-strikeout game today, but like he said in this post-game press conference, it's not something that happens often, just like how he doesn't really drop many bunts often either. But yeah, (laughs) if postseason is tomorrow, I'm going with Eric Kratz as the catcher. And you guys could hate me all you want for that. That's fair. Yeah, that's a fair argument. In the past three years in the seventh series of the postseason, Gary Sanchez is batting a 176. Yeah, so there you go. I mean blistering yeah it, it, it's painful because like i said gary he when he came on the scene everyone loved him and past few seasons he's showed us a, a great deal of potential but i don't want to say his time is coming gone, but it's inching closer to that um and it's it's sad to say because when we first saw gary sanchez we thought like wow we got our next superstar here and then judge kind of overtook that and now judge isn't even there so now we're just leaning on veterans and rookies so, Eric Kratz, do me a solid. Keep producing. Keep being a leader in that clubhouse because you're the only bald leader in that clubhouse. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty throughout sure the, that's all I have. Throughout the last 10 years he's been in the league, Eric Kratz played at the age of 38, was in the NLDS and the NLCS with the Milwaukee Brewers, and he's currently batting 292 for his postseason All right, career. but that's like in, what, five games or something? Yeah, around one year, two series. Yeah, I mean, it's a small sample size, but still, I mean, it just proves my point. When when you're in the playoffs, you need guys who work counts, have great plate discipline, because when even when they go up against the best of the best pitchers, they're, they're still able to possibly get on base, possibly do what they could got to do. Um, so unless you guys have anything else to chime in, um, I, I think that's going to wrap it up for us today. I think that's, that's all we have. All right, solid. So be sure to go follow us on all of our social media handles in the bottom left corner, right next to Brian's head uh, on hinge, New York.com. Go check it out. We have daily content <laughs> in the reverse camera. And on that note, we will see you guys next time. Have a good one. <laughs>